Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, so oh, I said. Oh, this breaks my heart. Yeah, so I said. <laughs> <laughs> I know Canada is your destination, it's your dream country and you want to practice nursing in Canada. And as usual, the Information Hub got you locked down. My name is Priscilla Kuma, Lead Consultant, USRM Pathway Consult and a registered nurse in USA. Is this your first time finding my video? Please, my videos are good, great content. So please subscribe and you'll testify to that after watching just this very one, okay? So I have today with me a colleague who came from Zimbabwe to UK, UK to Canada, and he wants to share with us the process he went through. It was a little challenge for him, but he got it done. He is a Canadian RN, registered nurse, and he's working in Canada, and he has a lot of experience. The mistakes he makes, he made and all, he's going to elaborate on that so that you watching do not make that same mistake. Okay, I come from Ghana and I live in New York State. I work in New York State as a registered nurse and I love creating nursing migration content. Okay, so follow me on all my social media handles. The name is the same, Priscilla Kuma Aren on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook. I have a Telegram page. The link is in the description box. A Facebook page and I have a Facebook group. Make sure you join the right groups. There are scammers out there impersonating me. Make sure you speak into the right person. Do not pay anything to somebody claiming to be me. Let me issue the disclaimer once more. There are people out there impersonating Priscilla Kuma Aaron, impersonating US Iron Party Consult and taking money from you. We found one recently in Nigeria. Be very, very, very careful. Okay? Be very careful. If you need any information, go to www.usrmpathwayconsult.com. There's a box there, you send a message, it comes right to us. Our contact numbers are there and our emails are there. You cannot pay any money directly to not even my personal account. You have to pay on the website. So if somebody is not giving you links to that website to pay on that website, you are in the wrong place. I'm issuing this because of what has been happening in the past few days. Okay. So, as I said, if you want to work in Canada, watch this to the end. Share this video with others. Do not sit on that information. It's not fair. We don't sit on information. We share to help others because we did not have it this way. And if you think my video has helped you, a friend, a loved one, or a family member, or a colleague, and you want to say thank you, click on the thanks sign below this video. The tank dollar sign, the love with the dollar sign says thanks. It ranges between $1.99 to $49.99 to say thank you to me if you think my video has helped you. So let's get right into the video. Let's cut the talking. Hi guys, as I already said, finally, finally, we have a nurse who did not school in Canada, but is practicing in Canada. And he's here to tell us the process. His process must be different from somebody else's, you know, but this it's just a guideline. Do your own research, as I always say. Go online, find the authentic information. Do not pick an information here and just use it. Do your research. Do your research. These videos we bring to you are just to guide you. So, Francis, I'm so happy to have you here. And welcome to the channel. Oh, thank you. Basically, introduce yourself to my viewers, please. Okay, my name is Francis. So, uh, I've been uh, so far... This is my second year practicing in Canada. Okay, Francis. But where do you come from originally? Originally, I'm from Zimbabwe. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, but I did my training um, in the UK. So I moved from Zimbabwe to the UK and then Canada. Wow. Where next are you moving to? <laughs> are you stuck in Canada? <laughs> I love Canada. It's nice. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I was in Canada um, not too long ago, a few weeks back, and I love it. Toronto is beautiful. So I love it. Yeah. So you trained in UK as a nurse. What type of nurse? Adult nurse? Psych nurse? Uh, psych nurse. Oh, okay. And I understand the training there is three years. Yeah, it's three years. And that's a bachelor's. 
Uh, no, that uh, I think they're changing it. But when I did my training, it was uh, you get a diploma. Okay. And then if you want a bachelor's, then you do an extra year. And I think they're introducing it that uh, you can either you can do a bachelor's, uh, but I think they're trying to, from what I hear, I think they're trying to make it into a bachelor of three years, four years, something like that. Okay. But when I did my training, it was like a diploma. Mm -hmm. So it was three years diploma. But then I did my uh, one year like modules where just to top up my with credits and then I, yeah. I got a, like a, a bachelor. Oh, okay. So after you did the diploma, you went to school or you went straight to do your modules to get bachelor's? So did you work a little bit? Uh, no, like, um, oh yeah, I did my bachelor's uh, after I qualified for a while. Um, so I did my diploma, started working and then like my, uh, my workplace um they were offering like uh, if you want to further your education they're willing to sponsor you so they uh, so i did that in uh, sheffield university so they collaborated with sheffield so you could work and then you can do your modules so you had about i think i had five modules to do over a period of time and then when you finish your modules and then you, you get your your bachelor's so i think i took i think i took my bachelor's maybe five years six years later after i qualified okay yeah. so do you, do you want to walk me through the process how you move from uk to canada first of all what informed the decision to change to move to change countries why did you move from uk to canada well i met my wife so my wife was uh canadian so i mean from zimbabwe originally but she she was living in canada okay so it was a debate whether to move to the uk or me coming to canada and I think I was just kind of like fed up with the UK. <laughs> it's beautiful, but I was like change of change of place. So I said, oh, no, let me move. Let me come to Canada. So she kind of like sponsored me. Uh, so it was a faster process for me to come over. How many years did you spend in the UK? Almost 14 years. Wow. 14 yeah. years. I yeah. see. So you arrived in Canada before you began your nursing process or did you start the nursing process in UK before moving to Canada? Oh, I started, I started my process, but then um, when I started my process, uh, it was before the NCLEX. Okay. So I think I started my process in 2014, mm. but then, uh, so it was, um, it's, it's called Crane, where you used to do Crane. So at that time, you, like, if you want to, if you want to practice in Ontario, mm -hmm. you go to the, to the nursing board and apply for it. And then they'll tell you what requirements they require mm -hmm. apply straight there but then like during that period i think 2015 that's when they introduced n clerks and then they introduced them um, so anybody who's applying for nursing in canada it goes to one place so it's a national nursing ass assessment service uh, mm -hmm. nas, NAS. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so whoever is applying for Canada, it goes there. But during that process, so then you choose which province or territory you want, you want to, you want to work in. So like I was doing that, so I had to change. So they're saying like, if you have in certain stages, then you have to go to restart. So kind of like I had to restart again in 2015. But I had already already started before I came to to Canada. But then, obviously, I had to change when I when I got here because like I had just started, and they introduced that I had to like kind of restart again. So I had to take I have to uh, reapply to NS so that uh, they can uh, like evaluate my qualifications, everything else. So it was kind of like a different process now. So that's why I had to kind of like start again. Okay, so 2015, you started again for which, where do you live now? Which are the provinces did you start? Uh, Ontario, Toronto, yeah. So somebody who wants to do this process, watching from UK or maybe outside the UK and outside Canada, can go to the NNAS website? Yeah, so you do the NS, whatever, then you set up an account. Okay. Yeah, and then like, um, then you have to complete an application. So the good thing is like, you can you can apply different province so you can say okay fine i want to apply toronto and british columbia and then also you can apply for different um, um like oh. you can yeah like nurses like you can rn or rpn yes 
so you can do all that but obvious you, you have to pay more you have to pay for each so i think the main application is about 650 us dollars mm -hmm. that's the main application so if add-ons like if you want to add like uh, a province it's i think it's 55 dollars extra so i think when i applied for it i applied for ontario british columbia and manitoba so i, I said oh let me just apply just in case <laughs> so yeah so i like, mean for like for extra 55 dollars i think it's better to like put extra province mm -hmm. just in case it doesn't work out they still got other province to to try so that's what i would recommend like uh, if you want to do that so just put for 55 dollars uh, for I mean fifty-five dollars for one province extra, right? So if you wanna put more, you get another fifty-five dollars. Okay. So you applied to NAS and you chose three three provinces. Yeah. But the documents you you only send the documents to NAS. You don't need to send any documents to the three provinces. No, 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 not anymore now. Was that was support previously. Now you don't have to do that anymore. So yeah. now it goes to N N N A S or mm -hmm. so like so when you open when you open when you create an account complete an application and mm -hmm. then you you pay and then they'll give you like uh, links where you have to like um, you have to prove your id like your passport and then your nursing education there's a form where you fill it in and then you have to you fill the top part i think a and then you have to send it to your uh where you did your nursing education and then where you were registered if you're practicing you have to there's a other form to send there also and then also employment so they want uh, like uh, employment for five years so if you over the five years so you have to if you like uh, work for different uh, employers throughout the five years then you have to send all those to each employer and uh, so and then uh, also then you have to prove language uh, proficiency also that so they have to do all that so once everything is in then they will give you a link where you can go and from from the, from the website send you a link so this they, they send the completed uh, assessment of what they've done to you to the province where you want to work and then you have to also start applying for them so the evaluation doesn't mean you you get uh it's completed so the province may require some more evidence or whatever so that's what happened to me with uh with uh with the ontario college mm. wow wow the process is not too different from the american process yeah. but it sounds more cumbersome uh, yeah. everywhere you work you have to send the documents the, the the jobs you did in the past five years yeah the five years so the problem i was getting so they want once they have to have like the if they don't fill the form mm -hmm. properly, yeah like they want the hours the description of your job and so if you mm -hmm. don't or if they don't fill it properly you have to do another one again of yeah course. and mm -hmm. then no stamp or a log on the envelope they have to they want that they won't take it again so yeah. you have to, so like some employers were overlooking that and they're not filling it properly so like kind of like do you know like when you because you have to send the form let's say you have to send the form to the uk it will take maybe a week or so depending on how efficient they are they can mm -hmm. take time to fill it in and then they send it to straight because they have to send it straight to to the ns mm -hmm. and then whatever time they review it it was last time like in my time like um it took me like a month or two and there was there was no update so i called them they're saying they're backlogged for six months so that was yeah 2008 yeah 2018 or so, so they were backlogged so like by the time they look uh at my uh, at the letter or the form there was a mistake so maybe two months is gone so you have to redo it again so that's uh like when you have to like really tell them they have to fill it properly uh, it, was, it was a log a, a log or whatever stamp on the envelope otherwise you have to restart the process again so that also took a long time again for me it was like it took months just to have employer <laughs> yeah yeah so wow. yeah and uh so like 
also like uh, so after all that also like uh, so like personally for me like my university um they, they didn't keep my transcript so they don't keep transcript for 10 years for some reason so when they wanted the, the transcript they couldn't the university couldn't provide the transcript they wrote a letter to them saying that uh, we don't keep whatever but so like uh, the NS, they can't do anything about it. They'll just have to send your finished assessment to your, the, the province. So Ontario, then, obviously, they, they, could, they couldn't tell what, uh, with, without the transcript. So, they, uh, like, uh, there was a gap in whatever. So, like, for them to assess me, I had to do uh, what they call an OSCE. Uh, so, it's, uh, so, I had to do an OSCE. So, it's like... A, I think it is seven to one uh, multiple questions, and then it's got uh, I think twelve uh, station scenarios where you have to go. Some of them they are live, uh, like uh, manacle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then you have to so they give you a scenario outside the door, what's happening, and then the buzzer goes, and then you go in, and then you do your assessment. So they, I think they'll be looking like your communication, your listening, your nursing skills and all that stuff. So you were 12 different stations to do that. And then, so, so they all assessed that the, the, the competence was, they couldn't didn't have my transcript. So looking at uh, how I practice. So that took a while also because of my university didn't have a transcript, so. Wow. Yeah. This is a lot of information. Yeah. So it's, as I said, it's not too different from, from America. Even one of the evaluation companies, CGFNS, Mm -hmm. They their website is still on the NAS and then NAS website. Yeah. They do evaluation as well for Canada. Form has to come directly from your school to yeah. the body that is requesting it. Yeah. And it has to be it has to be stamped. You cannot hand deliver it. You cannot give it to somebody. You cannot post it your mail it yourself. The yeah. school has to send it from the school compound or premises or office directly to the body requesting it. If you handle it or temper with it, they think you have changed your transcript or whatever. And because I run a consult, USRM Pathway Consult, where we help midwives, general nurses, and psychiatric nurses who want to work in the USA, I've had to encounter a lot of nurses who, who schooled or trained in UK. And because they finished school over 10 years, I was told that they couldn't get their transcript. And you just affirmed that as well. So it's rather unfortunate. So if you don't have a transcript to prove, that means that you have to do OSCE and 12 stations, just like in um, Ireland, you also do OSCE, 12 stations, or you do a written examination. But you did a written examination plus OSCE. Yeah. That means you have to be physically in Canada to do that. Yeah, at that time, yeah. It was before the COVID and all that stuff. So probably they changed it after when COVID was introduced. But before then, yeah. So it, it was like a full day. So you mm -hmm. face um, the questions. And then after that, you take a break and then you do the the scenarios. So it was like a one day uh, exam. Wow. Yeah. So this does not work for somebody who doesn't have a visa to enter Canada to take the OSCE or how do they get in? They'll get in, uh, they'll get a, you can get a visa so they can give you a letter for you to apply for, for the visa. To come and do only the OSCE and go back. OSCE, OSCE. If you're outside, they'll give you a letter. Because you can't do it outside. So you have no. to do Canada. So they had to like uh, those give you a letter for you to apply for for the visa for you to come, but I don't know how long you get for for that. So you came into Canada to do the OSCE for the first time, or you were already visiting Canada back and forth? I was already I was already here now. Okay. When, because I moved in two thousand and fourteen. When you do whatever, they give you a year mm -hmm. for you. But normally they say it takes a year to assess your your everything else, but then like it. Because of what was happening, like my my uh, my employer wouldn't, and mm -hmm. um, we had to go back again, and then my university didn't, have <laughs> so it was like kind of like we need this. I say, well, there's nothing I can do. They don't have it, so kind of like it took more than a year. So I think I had to pay again, so that to so that they can keep my case open. Oh. So it, it took uh, longer than usual. Yeah. So yeah, but normally they say it should take. I think. If everything's okay, like your transcript and everybody should take within a year, but because I read, I was having so many complications, so that's why it took over okay. two years. Yeah.
so if you are watching this do not be discouraged if canada is your dream country your destination your nurse and you want to work in canada make sure that uh, you get all your documents ready your school has to endorse the forms and send it also your place of work if luckily you've been working at the same place for the past five years good for you but if you've been working and moving around moving around you need to inform document information from all that so in the in terms of workplace documents what does it does it have to be a letter or what is it no the, all of it is just a form where they just have to fill it in okay yeah it's just like the hours you work the job description so so normally like uh, you just um, print it out mm -hmm. then you fill your information on the form mm -hmm. and um the form has your your kind of like your details already yeah, yeah like your uh, your i think your account and everything mm -hmm. so then they sent it to then when you print it out you just fill what you need to fill and mm -hmm. then you send it to to your uh to, to the employer and then the employer all he has to do is just fill what needs to be filled in and then send it back with a sealed with a stamp and everything and straight, send it straight to nns national nursing assessment service you waited for a year and you got a report that says your education is equivalent to canada canadian education system or what uh no they just send it they said they just finished so what they do is just do the assessment to just to make sure i think what they do like your you say you, you let's say uh, you 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 had your education your your diploma or your masters it was like certain university they have to clarify that it's true mm -hmm. so I think they just make sure that whatever information you're giving is uh, it's not fraudulent or anything like that it's true I think that's what they normally I think that's their purpose and then like uh, and then they'll send it to to the uh, college so they are the ones who see whether do you meet the requirements? So if the province require more information, they can request it. But wow. yeah, so the NNAS just like to make sure all all, all things it's it's genuine. And then the province the province you're applying, they're the ones who make the decisions whether you meet the requirements. If not, then they'll give you what they need for you to meet those requirements. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be monitoring this in the online account you created. You see the progress online. Yeah, yeah. So then, if they say everything is good, what next is that? What do you have to do next? Then, you you take the NCLEX. Yeah. So then, yeah. So like with me, though, so I had to do the OSCE and then they reevaluate my my application and see what's missing, what they need. So then, uh this is <laughs> so why it took me long again so like uh they said uh, i need to prove my english proficiency right so i said like what do you mean because like i did my nursing in the uk it's an english speaking country yes and my, everything so mm -hmm. why do you mean i don't meet my 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 education is was in english um so they said because i have been practiced for two years so now because like it's over two years three years now before i last practice i uh, last my nursing so we're saying before it's over two years so it's either i have to go to uh, 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 take an exam an english uh, exam uh, for english proficiency and or i need to where i'm working to prove that i meet uh, the requirement like listening reading writing and all that stuff so at that time because i was working as a security uh security so i said well i speak with people i write uh, incident reports or so i should meet so i got my site manager my property manager and my supervisor to write a letter and i specifically told them can you put like when you do like uh listening can you just put listening and then you, you specify like both they want to give me a hard time i said can you do that because otherwise if you just write a letter they will they will say no so like kind of like uh so he wrote like in in uh, like in writing he writes reports it it, it did a, it gave me a very good uh, uh letter i sent it to to the college and then funny enough they say no i don't meet uh, the english proficiency oh no yeah <laughs> So yeah, so oh, I said, it breaks my heart. Yeah, so I said, 
Then I said, okay. So then I said, then yeah. I, so you could contest. Mm -hmm. So I did contest. I said, I'm contesting because there's no way. Then so I put my case through. I said, you know, like I've like in Zimbabwe when you do your education it's in English. Yeah. Oxford. I went to the UK. I did my nursing in English and whatever. So because I didn't practice for two years, does mean my English is I can't speak English or I can't read. I can't do anything else anymore. So it's kind of like an obstacle that was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So I did. Uh, so I, I contested the. And then they had a committee where they will assess my mm. lucky enough they said I meet the requirements, so that was but I think it took uh when was it February? I think it took about three or four four months process just to just to have that uh completed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so yeah. you did the OSCE before you wrote the NCLEX? Yeah, I did the, I had to do the OSCE before the NCLEX, yeah. Okay, so after you pass the NCLEX, fast forward, you found a, you, you found a job. And also, you used Ontario. So, yep. could that license let you practice in Manitoba or somewhere else? Uh, no, you have to register with the, with, with the, with the nursing board in, in province. So, that's another thing. So, you can't just say, oh, I want to move to <laughs> British Columbia. That is the same here in the U.S. You have to do license endorsement or NCLEX transfer or something to be able to use it yeah. in Florida if you live in California. Yeah. Uh, so, you have to do, yeah. So... Yeah, so like uh, with me, so I had to do the OSCE, then they, assessed, then they said, okay, fine, that's fine. You can go, then they'll give you, pay, then they said, okay, fine, you meet to whatever, so you can do the end now. So that's when I did the end class. Yeah. And then, obvious, oh, after the end class, and then, yeah, but I haven't finished yet. <laughs> oh, you have a story. Go ahead. <laughs> after the end class, mm -hmm. now they're saying now, I don't meet the practice requirements because I haven't practiced for three years. So it's either, another process, man. Yeah, so it's either I have to go back to college and do courses to meet uh, back to practice, or I have to go back to practice in, in, in the UK. Yeah, so, uh, so I decided, so with that, so then I called them, I said, okay, fine, if I go back to the, I'd rather go to the UK and practice than me going to, to college and paying out, you know, I'd rather go and get paid. Get paid. Yeah, yeah. So they said, so I asked them, so how long do I have to practice, practice for? Practice. So I could, I could go there for a, a week, two weeks and do my practice and then come back. Nice. You know, but then I was saying like the amount of ticket I'll pay. So I decided to go there for six months. And also at the same time uh, that year, I was renewing my, uh, my UK license. So I said, well, I might as well kill two beds with one stone. So like I'll renew my license in the UK at the same time, I'll be getting the hours they need and the practice they need. So I had to like get the nursing board in the U and also so again I had to get the nursing board uh in the UK. UK to send a letter again after I finished and then my employer had they had to send a letter again so that I've done that. So all that done. Then they sent me a letter saying, How come when you did your application this employer wasn't on your form? But I said, Can't you see when I worked when I did my application, I wasn't working, right? I wasn't that employment but mm -hmm. you wanted me to to mm -hmm. get whatever so that's why they said oh so so eventually then they said okay fine now you can register now and then you can be you know, mm -hmm. yeah. you've been to hell <laughs> yeah for some reason uh, yeah but how that's... many years in total more than six yeah. years this the story yeah. is not... so like uh i could have given up but mm -hmm. you know once once you once you're a nurse you it's it's it's, it's you're you're good you know, it's, it's yeah. a career and stuff like that. And the process has become better now. It, w it wouldn't be the same like how no. yours is. The no. UK schools now, they send the things via email now. Yeah. And they don't let you do the, the paper transfer, yeah. mailing and all. So be faster. And with videos out there, contents like this will help somebody who is watching to not make the same mistakes you made. If yeah. you know you're going to move to Canada, you need to be in an active job and stay there for five years. Then you cut down on your stress you don't need to stay home we're not working and you have to now renew with it wow yeah wow. and they also keep uh, good uh, good relations with your employers because like they can have your form and just take their time right because, yes you know so that's another wherever you're working just keep a good uh, 
relationship yeah. because you never you never know when you need them mm-hmm. yeah they might choose not to feel the form well for you and they'll bring it back and it'll be a mistake and you have to the same it back again yeah yeah so wow. they can good for you yeah so i understand you're a psych nurse mental health nurse right yeah okay so you since you finally got your license your first job are you working in a psych environment and how has life been working as a nurse in canada compared to uk uh the money is better <laughs> the money is definitely better <laughs> you can you can nurse is no shade <laughs> US and Canada, the money is definitely better. Yeah. So like so like when I started, like when people were saying, Oh, like uh, when you're when you're newly qualified or newly registered, it's very difficult to get a permanent job. Normally yeah. they put as part time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like then when I when I finished, so when I started applying, so I was just applying all over. Mm. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I was like looking at all. Oh, I want to work in a specific environment. So, because I only had uh, like um, psychiatric experience, so I was only looking for uh, like a psychiatric, as long as it wasn't like a nursing home, anything like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to work anyway. Yeah. So, like uh, my first job, then I got employed as uh, permanent. So, I've been there since. Uh, so, like I work in the emergency psych unit mm-hmm. in, the em- in the emergency department. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I've been there. It's stressful with COVID. It was uh, stressful, and now like at the moment now, like people, pe- most people left for the for the states. Mm-hmm. But it's better. Most people left for the. Nurses are leaving Canada to US. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Everybody's leaving anywhere to US. The UK nurses are trooping US in their numbers. Uh, and but now, like um, with like we got agencies now they pay like double my my salary working for agencies so most people yeah. have like, travel nursing yeah travel nursing or just working like uh, where i'm working now is it's mostly agency now most, wow. most people left and then we're short staffed so yes, nurses yeah so agency and now if you join agency like they come they they, they pay double what i get pay double and triple yeah it's just a cheat being a staff nurse but travel is not meant for everybody i always say so when it comes to the ranking system and the pay do they have like us we have rn1 rn2 rn3 upwards do you have a ranking system like the registered nurse one and what is the average pay for a new grad or someone starting afresh overseas nurse uh, overseas like uh the like, good thing about it like um they they consider the years you've worked oh, nice. overseas but uh, like with me, like I think for six months, they gave me like the new lease. So it's about, I think it was about 35 per hour. So you, you get that. And then after six months, and then they will, you obviously have, you have a letter from your employer, how long you worked to verify that uh, you've worked for this long. So if you work for 10 years, you get, you, 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 your money goes up considerably. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So like, uh, so. If you've worked five years, it goes up. So yeah, so like they consider the uh, the years you've worked from from uh-huh. yeah yeah. So that's a good thing also. That was very good for me. So averagely for a new grad, it's about thirty five Canadian dollars. Yeah. Okay. Which that's is good a, money. It's not bad really, to be honest. It's quite very good money. I live in New York and I'm barely struggling around that same figure. And I'm not a new grad. I have years experience, almost 12 years experience. Yeah. And I'm not even an a RN1, I'm an RN2, pending RN3. So that is good money. COVID yeah. happened and they gave raises and all. And when people were living, they increased their pace and all. Wow. Yeah, so like if you work a few, a year or two, then go to agency, you'll be... <laughs> you'll be good. You'll be, yeah. 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 Wow. So... Any advice for anybody who is yet to embark on this journey? Anything you want, any tips or mistakes you made? Anything you want to leave them with so that they are to aid or ease their process whilst they do this? It's a lengthy process. It's expensive, of course. Yeah. Anything else, any advice before we end this, please? Yeah, I think you have to like uh, read the NNAS, the requirements. Just get your things ready because... And then like uh, before you um sent to your employers just give them heads up to mm-hmm. say yeah, it really needs to fill all everything needs to be filled in don't leave anything otherwise it will come back make sure there's a stamp on the envelope mm-hmm. yeah so that thing and 
you know, like just read to what the requirements so you know. But like uh, if you pay in the NNS or whatever, it's not refundable also. Mm -hmm. So once you're going to pay, you have to make sure you're committed. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, sometimes it's not an easy process, but there's always a light at the end of the, you know. Okay. But, yeah, because like, I'm sure now, because like with the COVID and the shortness of stuff, I'm sure the process is easier and more faster now. Mm -hmm. What's the need mm -hmm. So I think this is a good time now to 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 to, to apply. To apply. Yeah. 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 Was well, the very desperate of nurses? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. Yeah make it not as difficult this time and i'm sure it's kind of less changed by now mm -hmm. you know one last question i said i was gonna leave you but how is the shift system like how many hours do you work a week 36 40. uh it's like 30 about 35.75 but with with mine it's a it's a different shift pattern mm -hmm. uh so with mine i work uh two days and then two nights and then five days off, mm. two days, two nights, five days off, two days. So it continues like that. So I like it because, like, I can plan what I'm what I'm working next year, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So like, I like the five days off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Everybody with their shift system. Yeah, I'm, I work forty hours a week, so I do four to uh, ten hours, and I'm out of there. So I have two, uh, three days off. So. Yeah. yeah thank you very much francis for sharing don't get discouraged as i said just go to the website do your research apply share this video with others who are interested in working in canada you said you don't want to be in us it's not safe crime this and that canada is a good place to go it's a beautiful place i've been there you saw my vlog on this video and until the next video i'll see you bye bye